guys, it's Tom here and welcome to a brand new video where we will talk about the title race being blown wide open by Crystal Palace holding Manchester City to a near near draw and Man City hit the post twice, they missed some big chances but it's pretty evident that Man City are missing a striker like Harry Kane or Andy Haaland. They failed to sign a striker in the summer. Instead they went and spent a hundred million on Jack Grealish who is absolutely useless in my opinion. He is a flashy player without any end product in my opinion and it's a really overinflated transfer fee. A hundred million pounds for a player who doesn't really get many goals and assists uh, even playing for Manchester City and I didn't understand why on earth did Pep Guardiola make no substitutions when Man City were struggling to break down the Crystal Palace defense and they could have even lost the game if Crystal Palace took one of their late chances uh, late on in the game. Let me know how do you see the title race unfolding? What do you think the odds are? Do you think Liverpool are now favorites? I still think Man City are favorites just because they have an easier run in. Uh, Liverpool are still four points behind Man City. We have a game in hand, but that game in hand is against Arsenal away tomorrow. It's a huge game, absolutely monumental. If Liverpool could win that, all the momentum will be on at Liverpool. If uh, Arsenal get a draw or even if Arsenal beat Liverpool, then the pendulum swings back uh, in favor of Man City. Yeah, and you could see the Man City players were visibly under pressure and especially Kevin De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva looked like uh, they were very, very nervous, very agitated throughout the game. I only watched a 20 minute highlights video of the game. I did, couldn't watch the whole game, but uh, I think that is a brilliant result for Liverpool. And if it wasn't for the incompetent referees who absolutely disgracefully awarded uh, like uh, decisions for Manchester City when uh, João Moutinho was hit here by the ball and they have given a penalty to Man City for handball and also Rodri's handball wasn't given so that is like a four point swing in favor of Manchester City and if the referees and the VAR did their job correctly Liverpool would be level on points with Man City right now with the game in hand so that's how frustrating and infuriating the refereeing decisions have been this season but let me know how do you think the title race is unfolding or do you see how it unfolding and Gary Neville on Monday Night Football said that if Liverpool play that game against Crystal Palace then they win that game because they have got Liverpool got better strikers they got better forwards better finishers better strikers in terms of scoring goals who are more ruthless and clinical in front of goal uh, and also Liverpool have more attacking players who can score goals and get assists regularly than Manchester City and Gary Neville said that Liverpool have five of those players there that I, I would put money on to score the difference at the end of the season could be just the fact that Liverpool do have more strikers that are more clinical and more suited to scoring goals and I mean you only have to look at the top scorers chart in the Premier League the top three players are still Liverpool players even though Cristiano Ronaldo are now equal uh, level on goals with Jota and and also who is the top assist guy in the Premier League Mohamed Salah and I think that is absolutely brilliant and it shows that I'm not sure if Gary Neville is right that that Liverpool are not favorites in the title race but certainly it's it's very very even and why is nobody talking about Pep Guardiola throwing away a 13 point lead in the title race and bottling the 13 point lead in the title race because at one point Man City were 13 points ahead of Liverpool and now they could be within one point of Liverpool if Liverpool beat Arsenal tomorrow night. Why is nobody talking about that? Uh, because if it was Jurgen Klopp, all the rival fans would absolutely slander Jurgen Klopp and slate him for bottling a 13 or 14 point lead but because it's Pep Guardiola fewer people are talking about it mainly because maybe because Man City are a smaller club and nobody really cares if Man City win the title but how do Man United fans feel because Man United I was growing up uh, watching as a Liverpool fan watching Man United win everything under the sun almost every Premier League season Man United 
won the title or finished second and now Man United fans would rather Liverpool win the Premier would rather Man City win the Premier League title than the Liverpool they would rather their city neighbors Man City to win the Premier League title than Liverpool and it must be absolutely excruciating for Manchester United to watch these kind of Premier League title races where basically their two biggest rivals Man City and, and Liverpool are going head to head with uh, with each other for the Premier League and sometimes for the Champions League as well. And this is what Jamie Carragher said on uh, Ma on um, the Premier League title race. And he, he also did a Kevin Keegan impression, saying, "I will love it. I will love it if uh, Liverpool win the title out of Man City." When you do that with footballers, he said, expressing his anger in a in a post-match interview, he's talking about uh, about Kevin Keegan. He said about Leeds, like Kevin Keegan said about Leeds, when he do things like that about a man like Stuart Pierce. I will, I've kept really quiet but I will tell you something he went down in my estimation when he said that Ke Keegan said we have not resorted to that but I will tell you you can tell him now if you are watching it we are still fighting for this title and he's got to go to Middlesbrough and get something and I will tell you honestly I will love it if we beat them to the title love it and uh, then Jamie Carragher did that impression as well and what I also absolutely loved is that Bernardo Silva in his post-match interview even though he wasn't asked about Liverpool he, uh, the interviewer wasn't didn't even mention Liverpool but he had to mention Liverpool and he said that Liverpool still have to come to our stadium so it's still uh, we are the favorites in the Premier League title race so, and ben, I absolutely hate Bernardo Silva you know why because when Man City had to stand guard of honor when Liverpool won the Premier League title with seven games to go Bernardo Silva was so unsportsmanlike and so salty that he didn't stand guard of honor he didn't clap Liverpool onto the page even though every other Manchester City player and the Manchester City manager did they stood guard of honor they clapped the man Liverpool onto the page like Liverpool deserved to and Bernardo Silva was just standing there and did nothing yeah, he was like looking at Liverpool with disgust and that's not sportsmanlike behavior and Bernardo Silva Liverpool are re living rent free in his head and I love it that the pressure is getting to Man City the pressure is getting to Bernardo Silva and he's talking about Liverpool when nobody mentioned Liverpool in the post-match interview so that shows that that Man City are rattled even though Liverpool still have a lot to do to win this Premier League title race but now I think the momentum is with Liverpool Liverpool have won eight Premier League games in a row and now Man City have dropped quite a lot of points and that's why that Ronby, Rod, Rodri handball incident was so significant because they just lost to Tottenham and basically the referee bailed them out the referee gifted them a win away at Everton because they were 1-0 up and uh, Everton should have had a penalty uh, yet they didn't get a penalty and Man City ended up winning the game 1-0 and imagine if uh, they would have drawn that game that would have been now uh, three games without a win in the last four. Uh, that would have been very, very significant in the title race. And Pep Guardiola also blamed the grass for Manchester City's failure to break down Crystal Palace. He said, we played to win the game, we created more chances, we conceded few chances, the stats are there. The way we played was amazing in a difficult stadium with the grass not perfect. We were there all the time with and without the ball. And so we did a game, a good game. I love it when Pep Guardiola is saying Man City did an amazing game when they just drew nil nil. I mean, what was amazing about that? Yes, they kept the ball a lot, but they literally have a one billion pound squad and they should be beating Crystal Palace four nil every single game. If you just look at how much their squad is worth to how much Crystal Palace's squad is worth. And Gary Neville also praised Liverpool's front five players. Like they are an absolute joke. This lad, Luis Diaz, honestly, I saw him for the first time live in the League Cup final against Chelsea. I couldn't believe what I was watching for a player who has just entered into English football. He's absolutely sensational. The way he's running at people, the way he takes people on, the fearlessness, the bravery, the direct, the pace, the dribbling ability. And he can finish as well. So Liverpool have all the momentum. And Diogo Jota, even though he's out injured at the moment, he since he got to Liverpool, he has hit the ground running. He's scoring goals, getting assists. And Barry Darren Band said, I never thought I would see it. Well, not so soon, someone 
dislodging the front three of Firmino, Mane and Salah. But now Diogo Jota is Liverpool's first choice striker when he is fit. He came in there, he really showed it, no respect, respect. I mean the front three, and, and he went and you know what, I'm good enough to be in this front three. He got his opportunity, he kept scoring and scoring and arguably at the time was signing of the season until he got that injury that kept him out for uh, like three months. But this season he has sm some small injuries but not a long term injury like that and hopefully he will be able to still keep producing and keep uh, playing well and keep uh, scoring goals because uh, Liverpool need all the goal scorers that they, that they can uh, have in the team. And against Arsenal I expect a super hard game, I expect a super super tough game but I also expect Liverpool to grind out a result and grind out a victory somehow. I don't care how we win this, this game, we just need to win it. After that we have some winnable games coming up, we will also have the Champions League quarterfinals draw on Friday so we will find out uh, that and after Arsenal we go to Nottingham Forest in the FA Cup and that is also a huge huge game. Uh, we need to take uh, the FA Cup seriously as well and we will try to get to the final and win that competition as well and Jamie Carragher also got a lot of heat from Chelsea fans saying that Manchester United should go for Thomas Tuchel now that there is uncertainty around Chelsea and Thomas Tuchel is a world-class manager Man United are looking for a world-class manager and Jamie Carragher actually said it's a little bit hyper hypocritical of Chelsea supporters that uh, they were angry at him because that's what Chelsea have been doing every season almost every season they have been changing managers they have been uh, poaching managers from other clubs they have been you know ruthlessly uh, changing managers and basically Jamie Carragher just said uh, that Man United uh, have a right to, to do that if Chelsea can do that to any manager, then Man United can do that as well. And this is what Gary Neville said about the title race. Man City are top of the league, but they haven't scored four times this season. Liverpool have failed to score in a game once. Could that make a difference? Of course it could. Both teams are at the highest level, so you are talking about what the difference could be. Luis Diaz, Jota, Firmino, Mane, Salah are all at Liverpool and they will score goals. City are a brilliant team and they could still win this league, but that could be the difference. Liverpool are really dangerous. I look at those five strong strikers they have got, they go into the last part of the season knowing they can win an awful lot of football matches with those five players up front. City don't have the same luxury in attacking areas and Jamie Carragher said when a team doesn't have a striker they often play better football because they will have more players who will want to get on the ball, come short, teams can't get the ball off them but there will be times when you need to that guy to put the ball in the back of the net. Would Harry Kane have made the difference? I always said in the summer that I was surprised that Man City didn't spend the money they did on Jack Grealish on Harry Kane. I didn't feel partic City particularly needed Grealish, he's obviously a quality player but with Foden, Bernardo Silva, Ryan Sterling it probably wasn't the right choice. But let's not forget Man City can still go and win a treble this season. They missed chances at Palace that any player should score, not having a striker could make a huge difference but where City are in the league and every competition shows their quality so that's a very good assessment by the by Jamie Carragher and, um, and Gary Neville on the title race. If Liverpool win at Arsenal and go within a point and then go and beat Watford the pressure will be on Man City at Burnley before Man City play Liverpool in April at the Etihad. I know there are games to go but I think Man City's next three and Liverpool's next four games are the toughest and, uh, and we will find out a lot about the title race in those four games. So let me know how do you see the title race unfolding in the comments below. Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed this, have a nice day, see you later guys, anyway.